AVC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, back to do kind of a, a, a part two to a thread that I put up just like four days ago. It hasn't been that long at all. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people haven't even seen it yet. But uh, I just had this idea of doing this thread called Press the Button, where uh, those of you that do Discogs, and you probably kind of know uh, when you put your stuff in Discogs that there's a button that's called Random Item, or if you're using the app on the phone, you can actually just shake your phone and it does it. But it just picks a random item in your Discogs. And uh, I just kind of said, you know, pull the first 10 that pops up and just, you know, show those records. So I had a really fun time doing the first one. Like I said, it was only four days ago, but uh, I can see myself doing a lot more of these. I think you're gonna see a lot, lot more parts to press the button, just because it's like it's simple and you don't have to think about oh, what are the top ten and the best and ranking and like sometimes it can get a little tedious and after a while you just want to be able to just pick some music and just kind of show it, you know. So I, I like the simplicity of this. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do another one, part two here. Um, so this time, the first time I hit the button, what popped up was this right here, which is a seven inch from the band In This Moment. Um, uh, the seven inch is the song Prayers and Daddy's Fallen Angel, which is awesome because those are my two favorite songs by them uh, off of their debut album. Uh, first saw them one time when I went to see Rob Zombie and they opened for them when they were touring on their debut album. Um, which is just, I mean, the beautiful tragedy is the name of the album, and yeah, just a really, really great, great band. Uh, you know, a lot of mixtures of different types of metal. You know, uh, female front and everything, and just awesome, awesome band. Now, after their is it their third album or their fourth album? Their first three albums are absolutely killer. I love those, especially the first one. Uh, around the fourth album, I think, is when they had a band split. And they kind of went a different direction. And I don't really like the stuff that they're putting out now. I don't get that excited about it. But uh, their first three albums were just like, uh. But yeah, great, great 7-inch. I think I got that off their website like, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago or something like that. It was like $9.99, uh, which is kind of nice. They go for like 70 bucks now. So good find or good, good one to have there. Uh, the second one that popped up. I'm sure I'm in the exact order they popped up when I was uh, flipping through. Uh, Vanilla Fudge. Of course, you guys know this album. Definitely a total classic. Uh, a nice Japanese, 1974 Japanese pressing. This came out in 1967. But, um, yeah, you know, songs like Ticket to, Get R or Ticket to Ride, People Get Ready. And, of course, uh, my favorite off the album, which is You Keep Me Hanging On. I mean, they do a fantastic version of that. And, yeah, just a beautiful copy with an awesome Obi there. So that was the second one that popped up. The third thing that popped up, my girl, love her to death, Inya. Uh, this is a watermark. This is her album from 1988. Um, of course, this had the you know the gigantic hit or Oracle Flow on this one. Uh, that was definitely the biggest song off of this, and kind of a song that I guess somewhat really threw her into the public eye. I guess. Um, it was included on that Pure Moods compilation CD. So whenever you saw that commercial on TV, you would always see that clip of her and hear that song. And, and that's actually where I first discovered her was off of that Pure Moods commercial. So, uh, but yeah, I've, I've fallen in love with her ever since. And, you know, I know as weird as this may sound, one of the top 10 artists that I would love to see live, like in a perfect hall with the perfect performance, she is one that I would just love to see. Like A Day Without Rain to me is just one of the, just one of the just fantastic album but uh, moving right along the next one that popped up kind of a modern day I guess you can say kind of synth pop dream pop kind of band this is washed out uh, this is their release from uh, 2020 called purple noon uh, I say kind of a, a synth pop somewhat dream pop type of band this is definitely one where you listen to it you kind of feel like you're you know floating on the cloud with kind of a synthy type of feel and that very dream pop vocal type of thing uh, this album is a little more kind of mellow and low-key as compared to maybe some of their earlier albums uh, again within without is my favorite album by them but I've seen seen them live before two great great bands so uh, that's their 2020 release there and then the next thing that popped up which I thought was awesome because this is one of the things about the random item that's so cool because you go from Enya to Washed Out to Testament and uh, Dark Roots of the Earth. Uh, awesome, awesome Testament album. I'm telling you, man, this 
this is one I think they got a little bit overlooked. It kind of, you know, came out and it was there and everything just kept moving. This is their 2012 release. Uh, 2LP on kind of a greenish kind of vinyl there. Man, but this album right here, Straight Beast, this is such a great album. Um, you know, you have songs on here like, um, like if the opening track, like Rise Up. You know, you just throw that one on. And if you dig that song, you're going to dig the entire rest of the album because it flows like the exact same way. Uh, the really, really overlooked gem from 2012. Uh, there's also a cool song on here called Cold Embrace. Uh, what, I, I'm thinking about that song in particular just because it gives you like a um, there's almost some type of Metallica fade to black type of feel with that song matter, matter of fact to me it sounds like a Metallica song um, but yeah I mean Man Kills Mankind just a number of different great tracks on this so if you're not familiar with this an awesome metal album that you need not pass up great great stuff that's their 2012 release and then the next one that popped up was oh Timbuk Timbuk three, <laughs> and this is greetings for or greetings from, um, yeah. And again, another I guess you, I don't want to say classic album, but I mean you definitely had the huge hit on here, the future so bright. I, I got to wear shades. That was kind of a big hit for them back in uh, this was '86, I believe. Um, yes, yeah, so just kind of some you know nice '80s fun right there. Always remember seeing that video so much back in the the MTV days. But uh, yeah, nice gold stamp promo pressing there. And then another great band too, the uh, the Mighty Lemon Drops, and this is Out of Hand. This is their release from 1987. Um, again, another one of those great bands from the 80s. Uh, you know, really has that 80s sound. And I've always said, like, if you listen to this particular album, always get the impression of like if a, a surf rock kind of band or like a Ventures kind of band just like fast forward to the 80s and decided to do something a little more 80s new wave. I'd like I think the Mighty Lemon Drops or this particular album is what they would sound like because I mean this is very 80s very you know all of that but it's kind of like underneath there's just this element of like a surf rock that just kind of flows underneath it uh, so really cool album definitely a band worth checking out uh, and then let's see I got what three more the next one it pulled out here was a uh, John Handy. This is what new new view, the new John Handy quintet, uh, with with Bobby Hutcherson. Um, you know, another great album there. This is one that I actually you know didn't know about ahead of time. I was in a store, I don't know, some, you know, some while ago, and it just kind of popped up when I was flipping through, and it was only like four dollars or something like that. And I was like, that looks cool enough to check it out. And it really was really is a fantastic album. Um, yeah, so I mean, really really great stuff there. I know, actually, it's kind of funny I pulled that out because, uh, you know, I did that live stream um, last night with Jason, and uh, one of the, we were supposed to pull out a discography that we really, really kind of liked, and the guy that he pulled out was actually um, Bobby Hutcherson right there. So I may have to check in with Jason. If Jason, if you are watching this, let me know if you have this or not, because uh, as big as a Bobby fan that you are, you know, I might be willing to just kind of send this to you just to put in your collection, just because I know you are a tremendous fan of anything he touches just in case you don't have it, so uh, let me know. And then the last two it picked was actually CDs, and one was Tina Turner, Private Dancer, 30th Anniversary. It's kind of a two CD deluxe, um, you know, the regular studio album, like just got some extra stuff on there, so like nothing, you know, crazy to talk about there. But, you know, the album just completely threw Tina to a whole new level during her comeback in the 80s. And then the very last one it pulled out was this one here, which is Van Morrison, Brown Eyed Girl. Another really cool CD there. Uh, of course, it has a song Brian, "Brown Eyed Girl" on here. But uh, the other thing it has too, which is arguably my favorite song by uh, Van Morrison, which is Joe Harper's "Saturday Morning." Um, I just absolutely love that song, and I really do think it's probably my favorite song by Van Morrison. Uh, so just another kind of you know CD with some cool stuff there. So anyway, there you go, VC. That's kind of a part two of "Press the Button." As always, let me know what you guys think, and uh, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys.